Hello guys and welcome to episode 50 of my Total War Three Kingdoms playthrough playing as Sun Qian on very hard difficulty. Today we're going to be starting by moving Sun Qian to Bohai in another step towards controlling all of China. Looks like Cao Cao's at home. Maybe we take a turn or two to sort out our army because that army is big enough alongside the garrison to cause us some issues so I think I'm going to wait for some replenishment and potentially we could bring over a second army to help us out but we shall see. Let's go through the rest of our armies. We just have this one which is still replenishing. Almost ready to go though. Almost there indeed. I do need to equip this guy with, an, with a weapon. He's currently got the normal spear. We'll give him the battle axe. That is fine. Could also upgrade his armor. Although the defender's leather is pretty good. Could change his eavesdropper to the tax collector. And the clay pig. Probably to something that gives him more resolve. The wooden dog. There we go. Everyone else here is okay, right? This guy could use some more cunning, so we could give him the bow. Or the strategies of the warring states. That's actually not too bad. And we'll give him a, a devious attendant. Don't have any armor we can give him. I could give him the military shun, but I'm not going to. Because there's probably somebody else who could use that better. Alright, so that's done. Uh, we're not moving the army. We've got 10k to spend. Uh, we also have this army currently replenishing as well. Although that one's going to replenish very quickly indeed. So we can spend the money in our commanderies. Let's uh, head over to Nanyang. So at Nanyang, we currently have the coin maker. We can upgrade it to the Grand Treasury Mint if we want to. It is tempting. I could also push the Merchant Registry Office. What else gives us income from industry, actually? Uh, does the labor do that? It does, because there's a lot of industry here. We get 250 from the coin maker. Actually, this does produce commerce as well. Okay, let's go for then just the Administration Office. Or Confucian Temple might not be a bad idea, because the Public order is going down. We'll, we'll pop the Confucian Temple in there for now. At Poyang, uh, we do have the Currency Inspector's Office. And we've also got the Mail Post. We've got a lot of income from industry here. So I'm probably going to push for the private workshops. At Dong. How's the corruption doing? Minus 59% not too great is it wow public order is very low here where is this okay that would be because of uh, nearby forces uh, so I might just have to go for the confusion temple to sort that out and we can upgrade this to deal with corruption and then eventually I think we'll get a sixth slot sixth slot so we can go for the administration building still got 8,000 to spend Do we upgrade this? I guess we can. That is fine. Cheng Yang. This used to make a lot of money. Like This used to be one of our top earners. I'm not quite sure what happened. I guess it's because we're no longer putting assignments here. That's probably why. Yeah, it's 50% corruption. And we don't have an administrator. Well, we're going to upgrade the Craftsman. The Craftsman's Shack. Okay. Here, I might actually want to switch this out for the Confucian Temple. Although, the best way to deal with that would probably just be upgrade the city. So we'll do that first. At Badong. 
that's all well and good. We're actually increasing public order there now, which is nice. At Yulin. I guess we would upgrade it, but we can't because we don't have enough cash. Quite a lot of income from commerce here. So the private workshops would be the best bet. Yeah, we need to upgrade though in order to build that. We'll probably leave that on B. Fengsha, that's fine. We'll hold on to the 2k, I think. And we'll move on to the next turn, possibly. Actually, before we do that, there is one more thing I wanted to do. And that was check out my extra characters. So I'm pretty sure there was some characters that we took on that I didn't particularly need. I just kind of took them for their shit. And then I wanted to... <laughs> Get rid of them. Like this guy, I think we took him just in case he had stability, but he doesn't. So I don't think we're ever going to use him, so I might just get rid of him. Because we're currently paying for his salary. Although his salary isn't a lot. Right, this guy is on an assignment. What about Churang? Churang we want to keep because he's good for leading an army. We still have Fan Bo as well. Fan Bo, I think, has been with us for the longest time. I'm going to remove that from him. <laughs> There's no reason for him to have that. I could also take the axe off him. Why is that automatically giving him a Marshal G? Eh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Yeah, so we've got... Yudai, who could lead an army. Yurang would probably lead an army. Hmm. I might actually need another champion. This guy's good because he's got flexibility. He doesn't have reach yet, but he would get that next. So these are the two perfect ones for being the leader of an army. Right, anyway, let's move on to the next turn. Just kind of wasting time there. There are very few people who we're not at war with. I'm just going to delegate that. Absolutely no point in playing it out. We could do more damage than they got inflicted on them, but... It doesn't really matter, because they would replenish anyway before we attack them again. I'm hoping the rest of the armies around Yuan Shao's lands go home before they end up attacking us. Because at the moment they're all just walking through our lands. Which is not good, obviously. And we lost Hidong. That's fine. Gongshun Du declared war on the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Did a Zirong. Completed that mission, which is nice. That gives us the extra 40% trade influence and extra income from commerce faction wide, which is the most important thing. A request for independence. One of your administrators seeks the chance to strike out on their own. As such, they request the right to form an autonomous vassal state, yet continue to serve as your law subject. I'm going to deny independence. We've got an exquisite weapon. Let's see what we get. Right, the rebellion's imminent at Dong. Which is fine. I'm going to have to attack Lu Bu's army there. I'm really curious to what we got. We got a war blade. Uh, that's actually pretty good. And we've also got another Overseer. Dong Li is now creative, and Lu Yu is now understanding. Now, one of our farms did come under siege, which is this one. It is a level 4 farm, so our garrison's pretty strong. And that's what's uh, causing issues there. 
Right, let's uh, carry on towards that farm. I'm tempted to go into March stance. Carry on in that direction. Yeah. Are they in range to reinforce now? No. Okay. That's okay. Uh, let's go through our armies now. So Sun Qian, uh, I could probably put him into ambush stance. That would be the best thing to do. And if Sal Sal comes out, we can ambush him. Big old army there. Are we at war with Gungshun? Gungshun do? I guess we are. Hmm. Well, we're going to push down to the lumber yard from here, I think, with Sun Ren. Or actually, we could head up to Dong Lai. Not quite sure we're in range to attack that, though. I would like to hop from one settlement to the next. Slumberyard is definitely in range, so we'll go take that. I'm tempted to actually play it out, because otherwise we'll take unnecessary damage. Although, actually, saying that, I think we would anyway. We'll take the same amount of damage playing out as we would auto-resolving, so we'll just auto-resolve. Well, maybe not 900 losses, but... Yeah, whatever. That's okay. Right, Dong Li has leveled up. We can either go for Zeal or we can go for Tenacity of Steel. Tenacity of Steel is just, I think, too good to ignore. So we're going to pick that up and I'm actually going to give her the Warblade, I think. Oh, I could also upgrade her armor. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to give her the Master's Leather. It does lower expertise slightly, but the extra armor value I think is worth it. And we've already got an Overseer there. That's okay. She is sorted. Let's see. We want to take uh, the Taishan trade port. Let's make sure we attack this. And wow, that's quite the garrison. So this is one we're actually going to have to play out. I really do need to add extra trebuchets. It's going to be 2,831 versus 5,212. I could actually... Actually, that might be a good idea. If we just starve them out, we'll demand the surrender, but we'll starve them out and they'll likely attack us in the next turn. And that way I don't have to deal with the towers. Right. I don't really care about Liu Zhang, but I do care about Lu Bu's army here. How is he day? So let's make sure we go deal with him. Oh, they're going to run. That is unfortunate. I thought they might actually stand and fight that, but apparently not. Alright, Gan Min Shu. Not entirely sure where she's heading. Alright, this army, I guess we'll get ready to attack Zilong. Just going to ambush stance for now. And chill there. Alright, Gungshun. If we attack them, I think they'll probably fight. That's what I'm counting on. They will indeed. Very good. They've got a lot more men than us. But we do have the trebuchets to make up the difference. Minshi's pretty ballin'. Ganlu's not too bad. Yeah, we can duel their guys if we need to. I do want to duel them. Uh, so let's jump on in. This is going to be a big old battle. 
We've got a lot of archers. Loads of archer militia. Thankfully our range forces are actually pretty significant as well. It's just our front line's pretty depleted. We can put them into the turtle formations, which isn't too bad. I guess the other reason that we have a major disparity in numbers is because of the cavalry. There is that. So we're going to spread these out, put them into those formations. We'll have these at the same level as the archers and crossbows. Wonderful. They are in range from the start, which is perfect. Oh, Minshi and Ganlu are both relatively low on health, actually. Okay, well, we'll start the battle. I uh, need to just fire into the archer militia there at the front. And hopefully any shots that miss will just pile on through the rest of the units behind these G militia. And there was actually potential for me to move the trebuchets further back so we had longer to fire at them. And we're still going to hit a lot of targets, even in loose formation. I think it actually increases our chances of hitting a unit, honestly. We're never missing, at least. It looks like the entire army has loose formation. I think the other good thing about my trebuchets at the moment is we're not using flaming shots, so the rocks are bouncing through the lines. Right, I'm going to have to focus their cav down. Do I have loose formation of my own? I actually do. That archer militia coming forwards there. Right, we're going to push these over to the right hand side. Looks like my crossbows are just demolishing the archer militia, which is exactly what we want. What they're there for. This is tempting. Does Ganlu have an ability? No. We'll decline that for now. I've actually killed the majority of their range forces already, which is good. Right, let's take out these uh, mounted lance militia. Right, we'll make sure we're focusing the melee units before they get too close. Right, those mounted lance militia are very dead right now. Right, let's pull back. We don't want to be engaged by their infantry. Right, these guys are going to have to fall back. Uh, focus their leader. And I can probably duel their leader now. There we go. Got him. Let's move away from that engagement on the right flank. Right, 
It's a good opportunity for Minshew to get some health back, actually. Wow, those crossbows, where'd they go? Why did they walk forwards like that? <laughs> I have no idea. Alright, good job, Minshi. Uh, to be honest, he can probably stay there. Alright, we saved those guys. That's good. Alright, just have him leave now. Fantastic. Let's pull through. I should probably keep shooting those Jimenez in the back, that's fine. Well, they don't want to duel anymore. I don't blame them. My guys are very good. Right, we can demolish the Saber Militia even if they do stand still. Goodbye, Saber Militia. Nice knowing you. Alright, let's just go run down the others. I can just split off individual cavalry and it's actually in. Go run down these remaining forces. Half bad idea. And both their leaders are dead. Their entire army's been wiped. Okay, we'll claim victory. And that was nicely done. Our range forces carrying us as always. Not sure why my crossbowmen ran forwards. They should be on guard, so there's no reason for them to do so. That was almost outnumbered two to one. Some replenishment back. It's good. Let's get out of that territory and head back to Pingguan. Because I do need to replenish that force now, and I'll probably have it head towards Bohai. Alright. Uh, so Sun Tzu, he's busy sieging. We have this army ready to take the Yunnan Spice Market. No force there, which is good. No night battle, can just delicate. Lovely. Occupy. Okay, cool. Have I equipped this guy? He does have a military G. You could probably do better with the military great axe. I think overall that does more damage. He does reduce his expertise, but he's already got Baliani anyway, so that's fine. Alright, what about Luan Bao? She has leveled up. I think we're going to give her composure, right? 
because her strategist is miles away from getting it. But that is okay. Lu Yu actually has reach. We can get reach next on Hong Song though, so I'm okay with that. Alright, I think that was pretty much the last settlement of Yi Hui. So we should be able to kill them now. I'm hoping they just attack us. I am kind of tempted to just colonize this land so that we do actually have every single province because we are making 14k a turn so now we could actually do that I start heading down to Hidong should maintain enough replenishment good and then we have this army of Huang Long and Yu she needs one more turn to fully replenish which is okay and she gained the determined trait very nice All right, what's going on with our characters you die has leveled up Okay. I would probably go towards flexibility. Since that gives the extra replenishment for when we do make him a leader. Alright, back to spending money on our settlements. Upgrade the Confucian Temple at Dong. It's pretty important not going to rebel next turn. We can always exempt it from tax. That would lower our income quite a bit. I guess I don't have to do it this turn. It's only going to take one turn actually to upgrade this to the next level. We may be okay there. We shall see. Right. Nanyang. I guess we'll upgrade the Confucian Temple. Poor Young. Let's just continue to upgrade that. At Chengdu, we can start to lower corruption a bit more here. So we'll do that. I am going to have to look at places that are creating food for us as well because we're upgrading quite a lot of settlements to small regional cities, and that's going to use up a lot of our food income. Uh, we're going to have to upgrade this to a small regional city as well because I need a place to build a Confucian temple. Push that up. I might build up this one as well. That's more food, which is good. Uh, this needs upgrading. Yizhu. That's uh, not very happy at all there. <laughs> what about Hinai? Let's upgrade that food production building. Good. It's more or less everything done. It's just Ying Chuan that's under siege. We do have Sun Chuan nearby. Hopefully he can help that out. Alright, let's move on to the next turn, see if uh, anyone attacks us. That's okay. Yuan Shao didn't move any armies. Ooh, they're actually going to go for the attack. Okay, interesting. Just before our army is going to get there, which is unfortunate. But I reckon we can potentially win this. Quite a lot of archers they have. Just hoping that they don't have flaming arrows. If they do, 
could be in trouble. Because with towers, we can defend easily. But without, it's going to be difficult to kill their leaders. And therefore, their leaders will do a lot of damage. Okay, I'm glad they did attack. Because you can do a lot of damage to them. And even if they take the settlement, I can attack them next turn with Sun Chuan. Honestly, it might be worth letting them take the settlement so that we kill their army next time. Because if we beat them now, we'll probably just end up chasing them forever. I don't know. Obviously a bad idea, but whatever. Right, let's see. We just need to work out... Oh, they do actually have some crossbows. I didn't realize that. Um, couple of arch militia there. I might be able to get away with just having one archer unit here. And probably have two on each side. Oh shit, those towers are gone. Oh. Well, um, I guess what I'm going to do then, we'll fall back to here. No point defending there if there's no towers. And what we'll do is... Just try and kill these other two forces. And then converge on the last force. So let's actually bring my archers to this side then. Fine. Yeah, we can have a second unit of archers here. That's okay. Okay, let's start the battle. Just please don't have <laughs> flaming shot. I beg you. <laughs> right now we're engaging there. We can move these units forwards. Gonna make sure those archers die. ASAP. I definitely need my towers to keep focusing on the archers. Absorbed the charge there. They haven't really moved forwards on that side. They have come in the settlement though. Make sure we kill off the next unit of arch militia. As soon as they are broken or running. We need to have these move back a bit and then fire up and over into this engagement. Okay, good. Hmm, this is awkward timing. Very awkward timing. Right, I'm going to have a couple units actually charge towards these. 
And we're gonna we need to have the archers engage on this side. I mean that's fine. As long as the towers are held, like I mentioned before. Come on guys, what are you doing? Get shots up and over. I'm not giving you melee orders, just fire. Oh, those crossbows coming in from the side are a nightmare. Oh, this isn't good either. Uh, those towers are goners, surely. There's nothing I can do about that because I've been letting them fire for too long. Um, so we'll just have to turn these lot round and uh, try and deal with this lot. Which is fine. Uh, we can... And we can just leave that area. We can focus on these. Build that army before anything else happens. I uh, may as well be running down those arch militia. Can these really not fire? Come on. They are on fire at will, so they should automatically be firing. Mm. Right, let's move these out of line of sight or range, I guess, of the crossbows. Those BM warriors shouldn't have been charging down that unit. That was stupid of me. Are you still in range there? It's ridiculous. I was still holding on to the towers, which is good. It's just my archers are tanking it now. We'll bring a couple extra units over here. Mm, shit. This is going bad. Yeah, that flaming shot on this side made things really difficult. So I don't think we can win this one now. I messed up too much, especially with the crossbows there and the spear warriors getting into the archers there. I mean, we did make it towards the unit, but we almost died in the process. We're now losing control of these towers as well. These ones are being shot in the back. So it's just kind of... just rough. Really rough right now. I don't really have another unit that can defend these. Especially if those guys aren't attacking for whatever reason. Uh, like, I've got a load of spear warriors in the middle of their arch militia, but they're just firing at me anyway. It's pretty, pretty annoying. And these ones need to fall back. I'd say the only benefit here is we've got four units of archers firing at their two. And they're stood on top of each other, so we're going to do a lot of damage and get a lot of value out of our archers, but we're just going to have to make sure we don't get charged. So, let's just make sure we keep falling back there. My spear warriors can take the take the brunt of that attack. Alright, let's just line up again. Uh, actually, probably just fire at these arch militia over here, actually. See about doing that. Because then we can free up that spear warrior unit. Although there's only a few spear warriors left. Mm. Hasn't really worked out <laughs> as I hoped it would. I think we made our own unit route. Be friendly fire. Alright, it's over soon. Unfortunately. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if we lose this one. Because, like I said, if they take this element, then Sun Chuan just wipes them out anyway. It would have been nice to maybe win that way. 
Maybe if the other towers weren't destroyed already, and we could have defended at those towers rather than letting them into the settlement. The other thing that was weird was that the unit or the retinue that I chose to face off against next to the towers didn't charge straight away. The other retinue did. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. But it looks like they just sacked it, which is annoying. But hopefully Sun Chuan is in range to attack. Alright, Shi Hui. Not war with Zirong. Okay, that's all fine. Han Fu's gone to war with Hei Yi. And Shang Yang's now at war with the Yellow Terran Rebellion. Okay. The Yellow Terran Rebellion's dead. Uh, we have another noble birth. Hima Dan. Okay, cool. And support from nobility. Fantastic. Mission success. And the finest armor. Alright. Dong's got the imminent rebellion. Let's just keep following Sidai. And Sun Chuan. And wipe out these guys. And that is an auto resolve. Did enough damage with the settlement. Nice. Very nice indeed. Wang Ki Bao Zhu. Well, she's been executed. I'll have that weapon, thank you very much. And this guy's fulfilled, cheerful, and kind hearted. Not bad. But we don't need you, so we're going to execute you as well. Uh, let's just recruit. And that's what you get for betraying us, Lu Bu. Now he's going to hate us really badly. Like, there goes any chance of becoming friends again. <laughs> this Jade Sculptor dude is awesome. Wow. What's 10% income from commerce? We're definitely giving that to one of our administrators. Which one could use it? Probably Ching Pu, actually. I mean, all of them likely could. And that one's already got 10% from industry, though. He, does he not have anything? Gun Lee? We haven't equipped him. Okay, well, we're going to have to do that. Um, well, he's got the foreman. He's got the farm manager. That's fine. Okay, so Cheng Pu will give that to, and then Gun Lee we need to have a look at. So, Cheng Pu, you can have the new Jade Sculptor. And then Gun Lee. Is he. In our armies. How have I not given him anything? Well, we have another war blade to give him, so there you go. Uh, the extra 5% income from industry is not bad. Now, what army is he, is he in? Oh, he's just an administrator. Okay. He's not actually in an army. Which is why we probably haven't equipped him. Alright. Well, here there's not much income from peasantry. There is income, however, from industry. So we may as well give him the craftsman. And then this doesn't particularly matter, I don't think. Just something that gives him satisfaction. So a clay cup is fine. All right. Do we have champion's leather? We can give that to one of our vanguards. He's already got the leather of the fire phoenix. This guy's got the tempered iron skin. Garning has got his own stuff. What about Minchi? Uh, Minchi's already got champion's leather. Okay. Well. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> I don't think this is equipable by anyone except Vanguards. 
we'd have to give it to one of these guys. Oh, this guy's actually the best lord. Zhu Xuan. He is pretty damn good with his abilities in reach and flexibility already. So let's just equip him. And he can be the leader of our next army. Oh wait, he already has that equipped? Oh, we'll give him a great glaive as well. He can have a guard. And is this something that gives instinct? That does. Anything better? No. Okay, cool. I mean, it is actually tempting to make another army already. Wow, Timmy is going crazy with Sun Ren. <laughs> uh, I guess they are traveling together, so what can you expect? All right, loads of construction complete, that's what we'd like to see. That's why our income's going up so much. Ridiculous right now. Then you has leveled up. I uh, could go towards scholarship. This is actually pretty nice because of the extra 40% income from Commerce, Silk and Spice. Is the administrator of Poyang? Oh, where is Poyang? Let's have a look. Poyang. So we do have some commerce here. Not a lot of commerce though. I'm just seeing if it's worth that upgrade. I think in some ways it would be, because then we get intuition afterwards, which gives plus 15% income from industry. Although the bravery is pretty nice. Charge negate, immune to fear and terror for own retinue. Lots of lovely stuff there. And he also gets more expertise. I think that's probably better for now. Okay. Unfortunately, guys, it has been my time, so I'm going to leave it here. In the next episode, I might make a new army. I'm not entirely sure. But we definitely have more battles on our hands. Uh, we'll probably be taking Bohai, I hope. And we'll be having Huang Long and Yu and also Wei Huang uh, moving towards their, the enemy. So they might bump into some battles at some point. We also need an army that can take the Runan Iron Mine. So maybe I'll build one down here. Actually, that's not a bad idea because I do at some point need to take out He Yi and also Zirong. Uh, Zirong did take uh, Guan Ning, so that might have left them exposed enough for us to attack. Hmm. Have a look. Yeah, his army is very depleted. Uh, we'll probably attack him. All right. Well, that's that. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.